Hello gamers, it's nice and I hope all of you glorious veterans are having a nice day. Today I am very excited because we just got off one of the best streams of the year and the hype level, the copium meter is just off the charts. So while we're still early in this video, I want to go ahead and give a full disclaimer that this will not just be a normal breakdown video of literally everything that happened in the stream. There's a lot of great content creators around the Ashes of Creation community that will be covering this and I'll let them do that. Also, we're going to have a special uh, random episode of the Voices of Vera Ashes of Creation podcast here on the channel. And we'll be discussing uh, everything there. We're going to get our first impressions and kind of summarize the stream there. So what I would like to do instead today is obviously talk about <laughs> what we learned during the stream. But man, I would love to focus on the immense, immense amount of hype around Ashes of Creation. So not only was the stream like amazing, <laughs> but we've gotten a lot of news towards the end of the year and just in the last week. So we know now that we're going to get the announcement for the quarter that Ashes of Creation will release in 2024. We're going to get that in the December stream. Now, something else that's really cool is that, uh, well, we recently learned that there is people playing Ashes of Creation right now. That's right. So spot testing has already started, which is crazy. Um, if I was participating in it, I couldn't be able to tell you guys anyway, but just know that that is so freaking cool to me. And it just shows that the game's like progressing along and that it's right around the corner, it feels like. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see a quarter one or quarter two announcement, whereas I was predicting quarter three before which that wouldn't have been as bad anyway. Anyways, this being confirmed is just so cool and you can just see the hype from around the community just building and building. Something else really amazing is that it seems like the whole community was blown away by this showcase. And not only the showcase, it just seems like everything has been ramping up lately, like the hype meter, the, the copium, everything in the air is just all overwhelmingly positive from the community. And as we get closer and closer to Alpha 2 and you see the writing on the wall, I imagine this is just going to keep getting better and better. Um, for instance, we know that next month is a showcase of one of my favorite archetypes so far, the Ranger, which I'm so excited and can't wait to cover that here on the channel. And then in January, it looks like we'll be getting that big PVP showcase, which my goodness, that's going to be a video by itself. We got to talk about this. <laughs> but um, before we get into everything and break down some highlights from the stream, I'd like to thank all of our YouTube channel members. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. I truly appreciate you. Also, if you guys did not see my announcement, I will be uh, attempting to stream on Twitch. So be on the lookout for that. YouTube obviously still be streaming here as well. But uh, I did start a Twitch channel. So if you guys would like to get that a follow, it would mean so much. The link will be in the description and the pinned comment. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So I would like to go ahead and discuss one of the most important pieces of information I feel came out today. And um, well, previously it was our understanding that you can maybe be a jack of all trades, but only a grandmaster of one. Well, that's changed. Uh, per Steven and Discord, you can actually be a master in two different artisanship categories and they don't have to be in the same tree. And I'd like to go ahead and give my direct and honest feedback here. And just to preface this first, uh, Steven did say this is something that, you know, they're just testing. It's likely to change. Please keep it one. In my opinion, just keep it one. I really like how um, honing in on one thing has a great, great economic and political and social uh, implications in the world. MMOs have gotten away from that. Um, as you guys know, or if you're new to the channel, I played Elder Scrolls Online for years. And in that game, you can be a true master crafter. You will not need anyone. If you were buying stuff off the market, it's because you're too lazy to go get it yourself. You're not restricted in any way. You can be a professional lumberjack, professional cook, blacksmith. You can do it all. You can craft it all. You can refine it all. You do everything. You don't need another player unless you're just trying to save time and just straight up buy it or trade it with another player. New World, as I uh, main right now, it's the same situation. You don't need anybody. If you're buying stuff, it's because you're too lazy to go do the hard work and go sit there and harvest for hours and get the stuff yourself. You're not restricted with the amount of skill points you can spend or there's no situation. There's no system involved that says, hey, you can't reach 200, level 250 mining. 250 tailoring tanning whatever <laughs> you can do it all and i think when you have a system that encourages players to have to trade have to negotiate 
have to set these prices um, and you create a system of supply and demand, it's a really big deal and it really will help bring that social aspect of MMOs back, which is something I feel they got right the first time. And I don't think there's a true point of testing a two grandmaster system. Um, in my opinion, there's just there's no benefit. I know there's some people out there that want to do it all. And I know there's some people that would be OK with having to. I mean, obviously, because they get to have two. But in the long run, I think it's going to be better to have everyone have their own niche, have their own thing that they specialize in so that they do need other players. And uh, that's my take on it. I don't think it's a huge thing, but I really hope that in the end, you know, that we are stuck on that one artisanship grandmaster focus. Um, but that's my take. You guys let me know in the comments below what you think. They showed off a lot of huge uh, UI changes, which um, I'll have here in the background for you, of course, which I think is just showing their progress. Like if you look at how the UI looked a year ago, you can see they're slowly getting towards that final polish. This obviously is still a work in progress. This ain't the final thing, but you can just see the writing on the wall, if you will. Like You can just see that it's going in a good direction. Uh, we also saw, like, I think the animal husbandry uh, station, you saw where you can purchase things. Um, they talked about armoring gear, like how you can wear something that gives you a crafting bonus or lumberjack bonus. They went on more in details about the bags and how you can buy bags specialized to your artisanship uh, skill line. If I'm a lumberjack, <laughs> it's funny, I probably will be a lumberjack and I probably will be a ranger. And so seeing that being what was played was kind of hilarious but anyway like if you're a lumberjack you can get those specific bags that let you stack more wood on there like little things like this it's just so cool to know that they're going really really in depth with it it was really cool getting another little preview of the ranger in action before we get to see it in its full showcase um something that i thought was really cool as well is that they didn't just start the stream with all the materials needed to craft that weapon in their inventory they went through pretty much the whole process of how you would need to go gather materials, get it together and craft that weapon. And um, they even went to a corrupted zone, which I've been wanting to see for a while. And we got to see those materials they've spoken of that's only available in corrupted zones. And this seems like something if you see that getting close to your node that you want to make sure you're sending groups out there occasionally or if you're going past it, you want to make sure you're taking out those corrupted zones. We saw a cool like elite or boss in there that they just apparently weren't comfortable taking on, I'm sure. Seeing the materials coming out of that zone really makes me wonder like how useful it is. Um, so I, I just think stuff like that is cool. I was also overthinking things like it would be a cool mechanic if you gathered like corrupted material and put it in your inventory. Like if you had only a certain amount of time to like offload it or put it in storage, like you can't carry it for too long or else either, I don't know, maybe your character gets corrupted or you start getting penalties or get like a small, like you start losing health slowly. I think that would be a cool mechanic. Uh, maybe it's doing too much, but I just thought that would be a, a cool little um, lore thing to happen, if you will. Uh, but yeah, something else that we noticed that the team has been hard at work on is man. The lighting and the shadows looked so, so amazing. Um, I thought the node showcase looked, you know, very, very impressive, like incredibly impressive. But that was a huge uh, point of feedback that a lot of the community gave was that the shadows were way too shadowy. Like it was almost nighttime when you were standing in the shadows. It was like a huge contrast. And um, it seems like they fixed that. And the lighting of the nighttime, superb. I have no feedback like that. It was just amazing. Um, you compare this to the day and night cycle from last year and look, uh, ugh, it just looks so good. Um, something else, that moon looks so glorious. Like my gosh, that moon is so beautiful. So I thought that was a really good improvement. Towards the end of the stream, we finally got to see the night blade crafted and it was really cool. Um, it looked cool for one, but we actually got to see it being upgraded, like each upgrade, which was really cool. So we got to see the color tier system and everything like that. And I just want to say I love that weapons can look cool without any pre-order skins, any cash shop skins. Like it's I, I just really, really hope that the end game items, which it seems to be the case, that the end game items look just as cool as those fancy things that we pre-ordered. And um that's something really, really impressive. It's something that a lot of players uh, have saying been missing from games. It used to be that, oh, you look really cool. You did some crazy 
hard mode achievement or something like that. It wasn't like, oh, I got my credit card. And this is not me on a pedestal. Don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> I played Guild Wars 2, and as soon as I got into that game, I saw a cool skin. I was like, oh, I want my character to look like that. So I totally get it. But I think gamers overall, including myself, we want to earn something, and it looked really cool, you know? I love, you know, exclusive cosmetics i think those are fine i don't think there's anything i'm not against that i'm not against transmog i'm not against none of that but i love showing off something and it's like hey you know i had to beat this boss at this difficulty or i had to do xyz to me that feels even better but uh you guys let me know your thoughts on um skins and earnable skins and everything like that in the comments below another cool thing that happened is my question from the forums actually got answered this question actually stemmed from a developer question uh, or an office hours that the developers did. And I kind of wanted to get some more detail on that with the new player experience and tutorials. Is there going to be a tutorial? Because it seems to me that in games, there's like a lot of hand holding and, you know, you got these dialogue boxes always popping up and it tells you literally everything at once and you're just ready to get out and explore the world and you've already done skipped all the dialogue and then when you need to figure out how to do something well they gave you that information so long ago but you were just getting overwhelmed with uh tutorials that it didn't really stick rather than putting you in a situation and then giving you the uh tutorial information i think that's a good way to do it but in this case with ashes of creation I was more so on the side like, OK, I don't want no hand holding. I don't want anything like that. But with the corruption system, I am kind of concerned. And um, I'm going to have a clip here with uh, Stephen and Margaret uh, answering the question. But my concern with this was you guys remember the whole PVP fiasco where there was a lot of misinformation being spread. I still on videos and podcast i get people that are so fearful of pvp and or people that have painted this image this negative stigma that ashes of creation is some bull loot um gank box where you're just gonna every time you step out somewhere every time you're in the middle of craft and some players just gonna gank you and gank you and there's no penalties and you know i just wanted something in place when players join the world of vera to uh you know let people know that's not how it is but also prevent you from attacking a player or PKing, not realizing that there is a huge negative con to it. I personally think this is something very important to implement. Um, maybe not for alpha testing, because anyone that spent $250 like me and invested in this game just to test it, if you've done all that, you're aware of the corruption system. You know, you're not just showing up. Oh, most people aren't just showing up and will understand the corruption system, but it's not going to be a priority for Alpha 2, but once we get into the betas, which they've already confirmed is the case, which I'm so glad they gave a very detailed answer here. Um, I do think that is something important because uh, I am so tired of getting that comment. And even though this is explained very well in the wiki, it's explained very well when it comes up in streams. It's just something that players are, you know. You just see this game on Steam or you see somebody streaming it. You just pick it up. Oh, $15 a month subscription. I'll try it out. And you join the game and then maybe you don't realize you shouldn't be attacking that player or maybe you don't you get killed. You get PK'd and you're just like, oh, well, this isn't fun. I lost my mats. I got to go pick up my stuff, blah, 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 whatever case may be. And you need to realize like, OK, yes, this happened to you. Yes, that's unfortunate. But here's the negative that happened to that player as a result of that. So this isn't something that's going to keep happening. This player, in theory, shouldn't be killing you constantly and harassing because then it's against TOS. So that's the reason I brought this question. But I'm going to stop talking and let you guys listen. The first question here is from Nice Gaming. Thank you, Nice, for also making amazing content. We always love uh, seeing that. They wanted about nice. new player experience. And is there a plan to have a tutorial or quest detailing corruption, the flagging system, um, et cetera, as new players enter Vera? Absolutely. Um, that is not something, however, you will be noticing in Alpha 2. Um, we call this obviously our first time user experience. The first time user experience is something that's going to have a lot of love and attention during betas, uh, but is not going to have much attention during Alpha 2. But it is intended for us to have a very in-depth uh, first time user experience to kind of 
introduce players to the number of different systems, right? Yeah. They're not going to be super in depth. We don't believe that first time user experiences should handhold players through all of the processes and reveal the world, so to speak, but just to give them a shallow touch uh, for these systems so that they understand the concepts uh, and, and essentially how to, how to navigate. But we want to leave Sometimes it can be overwhelming course. to have like a bunch of yeah. UI pop-ups. I think also we've been trying to take a more tangible process of like you learn you are learning through the game and not always through windows popping up at you too but yeah in conclusion i would just like to say i am amazingly impressed with intrepid's progress throughout the course of this year this transparent and open development process has just really i don't know almost set a precedent for games that i look forward to in the future like if i don't get to see under the hood i don't want to buy the next car if that makes sense and i really really love everything we've gotten to see and we're seeing a lot of things a lot sooner than honestly that I was predicting. Um, being able to see the PvP stream in January, like that's big. Like that is a huge, huge step. So yeah, you guys let me know what you thought of the stream. Um, I like seeing everything about the artisan tree. You let me know um, once again, if you like that you can choose two uh, Grandmaster professions, if you want it to just be one. Also, what is the profession that you're gonna choose? Because I'm trying to gauge to see what I think is going to be the most popular on most servers. Um, I, I could see a lot of people leaning currently. I mean, we don't know much, but I could see a lot of people leaning towards uh, animal husbandry. That one looks really fun. But um, you guys let me know in the comments below. Also, reminder, once again, thank you so much to our channel members here on YouTube. I really appreciate everyone that decided to subscribe. Um, if you made it this far, make sure you like the video. And once again, Follow me on Twitch. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do that cliche content creator thing for a couple of videos where I gotta remind you guys, like, hey, I have a Twitch now. It exists. Follow me over there too. Uh, so y'all forgive me, but uh, once again, thank you so much to everyone in the community. Appreciate you. Peace.